Incognito from Posted on the Corner, tapping in Hot 107.9 and Remy Martin. We're about to do something special today, live from Main Street Studios. We're going to mix it up, ATL, talk about this mixtape culture. We're going to tap in with some of the greatest influencers from the city. Grab your bottle, let's do it. Bow, bow, bow. What's up, world? It's J Money. Mix it up. ATL with Remy Martin, man. Salute the big dogs. It's J Futuristic. Ow, ow, ow. Let's talk about this Mitch, Mr. Futuristic mixtape when it hit the scene. Oh, my God. It was like a holiday. It was like a new holiday. He'll tell you, anybody in the line will tell you. It changed, like, the culture. It, uh, it did more than... I went at the time. I was just making music. You know me, I came straight from the street. Like, I ain't know nothing about this world. So it was like authentic. Y'all was getting the, the uncut without the, cause I wasn't prepared for success or none of this shit. So it was like, but it was like, y'all got feelings out of me that I didn't know I had in me. Y'all seen a side that I didn't know that was a death. And that was the futuristic fun, ow, ow. But when I was doing music, my whole vision was like, I just want to do something different. like. Everybody talking about the trap. I done been to the nigga, this where I'm from. Like, I'm born and raised in this shit. I just wanted my music to make people dance and have fun, like, and sauce, you know what I'm saying? Like, the drip. You see how skinny, we skinny the world up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Everybody was baggy, big t shirt, yep, and my white tee, all that. We was there. I'm looking at pictures of me now. Damn, shout out that big ass shirt on, big ass pants. I know everybody do it. So it was just like when it dropped, it changed the culture, bro. Like then I didn't know I was doing it. Let's be clear. I just was being me. I wasn't trying to be like Jeezy, Ti. I like them. I respect them because they from my city. They rep my city. But I was like, man, I want to have a little bit of them, a little bit of this, and all of me. And that's where Mr. Futuristic came from. And it was something that everybody wanted to do. We had the Travis Porters doing it. They came and got me. I was the first person to do a song with them with a name. Like they came and Charlie uh spit your game then. He was like, he had did my interview. He was like, man, I'm gonna do the interview. And I was like, damn, he did this interview. This shit just went viral. I gotta do a favor for him, cause that's what kind of person I am. You do something for me, I got to do something for you. And he was like, man, I want you to do a song with my group. My group. Man, we did that motherfucker in the basement where he did spitchogame.com. The studio was right here and the video site was over there. You know what I'm saying? And look at what Charlie became. A mogul. Well, this man just bagged up from the music. Now he doing whatever. You know what I'm saying? So it was like I was the first one to grab him and he was the first one to tell me, like, bro, you are a star. He was just like, even when I used to go over there and work with College Park with VIC with the bow and it was just like everybody I came across at that era and that time, they seen what they was going to do, but I didn't. I just was like, shit, I'm just doing something. I'm just being J Money. You know what I'm saying? But it was like, I don't know, bro. It was like God was driven everything that was going on. I feel like God was paving whatever was happening at the time. I feel like God did that. Like, I don't feel like I really had no control over it. I was just being a vessel, you know what I'm saying? And that's just like you in life. Like now, incognito. You don't try to say, oh, I'm going to go on the station and be like this dude, right? If they going right, you might say, I'm going to do my own thing, right? So that's how I was in the music. I seen everybody talking swag. It was like, damn, I'm tired of hearing this song. And get what? Even T.I. at the time had a song. And no, 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 swagging like us, swagging like us. I used to remember this, I'm telling you. But I'm on here talking about sauce. You know how I got blistered by my homeboys? Sauce, what that? That's gay ass shit. What's that? Sauce, nigga, you talking about you saucy. How that sound? I'm telling you, niggas looking at me like this. Young Thug even said in one of his songs back then, one of his mixtapes, I came from nothing one. I ain't J Money. I don't want that sauce on me. And nigga, don't you know that was a, a meme on Twitter? Niggas used to send me that shit. I ain't J Man, I don't want that sauce on me. Now come back 2017-18. They want sauce. So it's God. Look at it. It's like for so long I was going from the Mr. Futuristic, from when everybody was just, even from the stations, the world, everybody was just all over me. Till it was a tough point where J Money had to learn because I wasn't prepared for it. All this started with Mr. Futuristic. 
where I wasn't prepared for success then. It happened so fast. I ain't get a chance to grasp it, you know? If you don't get a chance to grasp something, get what? Like, just like a relationship. I know all of us don't have a relationship where it be like, damn, I had the perfect motherfucker. But I'm, I ain't even hold on to it. That's how it was. I had this big ass rich relationship that I took for granted. I'm holding it with a with a pinky, not my whole hand. And that relationship went that way, and I seen all the people that was like built on Mr. Futuristic Trap of the Year. Cause you know, them takes like, come on, bro, we pressed up like how many? 400 Ks too or some shit like that? 400,000 copies, you know? Like, it wasn't the Instagram where I can go viral. It wasn't a such thing. It wasn't. Unless you go viral on the news. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> or MTV or BET. That was it. That was only made. And we had Twitter. Boring Twitter. No pictures. We can send you a link, though. You know what I'm saying? You can see my profile. You can barely see it. You can try to squeeze it and get it. You don't have the Instagram. Damn. Oh, that's Jay Mind. That's how he living? It was like, <clears throat> and the world only got the uncut side then. They didn't get that. I mean, they not. I'm sorry, the cut side. They ain't never get the uncut, the real life J Money. Let me see how this dude is. Cause if they did, I'd still be. You know what I'm saying? Millions of followers on Instagram, and but I didn't care about that no more. You know what I'm saying? It went to when people's like, Jay, what happened to you for so long? What happened? What happened? What the fuck? You the hottest in the world. The game. You changed the culture. Then for like four, five years, we heard nothing from you. Really, you went. Man, I had to get my life. I had lost myself. This shit, you know it. Anybody that know it that's in a field or something that's so competitive. This shit, more competitive than sports. And that's supposed to be the most competitive game. But now, no, that shit changed. It's music. This shit way more competitive than that. Sports, all you got to do is work out and train. And you're going to get in. And this shit, we train. We can be in, I see niggas that been in the studio for 10 years straight and never got on. With money. Y'all know it. It be the nigga that got the money that got the garbage music. You're like, damn, that nigga got all that money. Bro, why don't you just go sign your own, boy? Who fired? You got a nigga that's helping you with this shit that's firing you, but it's like you hating on him. So it's like, this the most competitive game. But what I learned, if you don't have yourself together up here and have goals and morals first and standard and stand for something, you'll never make it. Never. You might get, you see his niggas that get on, we hear about them, then we, they end up down, he going to jail. They get on, they can't handle the money, girls, like kill their best friend in front of this shit. You feel what I'm saying? Like, what? what? Bro, you at the house with your friend, you killed them? What? You know what I'm saying? That type of shit going on nowadays. And it's like, they, they weren't prepared. So me, I had to bag up, even with Soldier Boy. Everybody was like, Jay, what happened? You and Soldier Boy, y'all was going on tours. Y'all hanging every day together. Zan with that lean. Man, Zan with that lean, bro, no lie, right hand to God. I think them, that shit did like 10 million views in less than two weeks, a week and a half. No lie. Lil Wayne tweeted about this shit. When we put this song out, Lil Wayne tweeted, Zan with that lean. You know he ain't gonna tag a nigga. He, I don't know why that rapper shit. It was that rapper shit. He ain't tag a nigga. But. You know, I retweeted it, kept, I might have that shit in one of my old photos, because that was like a highlight for me. Because me, I don't give a fuck how much money I got. To see people fuck with me is a blessing. It's something I can't, money can't even give you that feeling. Of being on the stage. Nigga, go pull up that T.I. J. Money farewell concert. That was Atlanta. Y'all remember, it was Atlanta. Right before T.I. went to jail, he did that quick concert. He ain't had nobody with me. Soldier Boy, for because he said his kids wanted him. I think it was me, him, and Soldier Boy only. If you look at Atlanta and how they responded to J Money, and it was like they cut it, they ended up cutting the beat music. <laughs> you hit everybody in that moment. I'm like, I still use that moment now for motivation. It was times when I ain't know where to go left or right. I go look at that YouTube, I go look at Justin Bieber on YouTube. Talking about first name, last, J. Bieber, first name. And I'm like, bro, this is a competitive game, and out of 100 million people, you made it to that side. So is you going to stop then? It's like you went through all this to get in this maze and get to the end, and your dumb ass going to go right back through it? No, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I got my life together. 
You know what I'm saying? It's like the moment I tried to, I got shot. The devil tried to take me off of it, tried to take my mind off of it. But even my mama tell you, when I was in the hospital, and they was like, we going to cut your leg off. Like right here, they said they was going to cut my leg off. They was like, because all your nerves in this side of your leg gone. So we got to cut it off or it's going to affect your whole body. Man, my mama told me, and man, Lord bless my mama, she right now just dealing with cancer herself a lot, real bad, past four years. So for her, she was so strong for me then. That's why I was so strong for her. Now people are like, bro, you go hard for your mom. Look at here, mama. Hey, I'm doing an interview, but I was just talking about you. You must be in my back pocket. No, where you at? I'm doing an interview with 1079 and Remy Martin. Okay, so you going to be there for a while? Nah, I'm finna let them uh, come get the truck so they can come pick you up. Okay. Okay, I'll call you when I get through. Okay, because I'm ready. Okay, love you. Love you too. All right. Look at that. You feel me? God. I'm talking about my mama, she called. God is so real. I'm a vessel, bro. I'm telling you, anything around me, touch, anything I touch, it's like, for me, it's be like anything I touch turn to wood. Like now, anything I touch, like we got this project, Shells, me and my business partner. It's like, we doing the. The first, you know how I was the first to say sauce and first, I'm the first rapper and me and my partner and uh, King Lee, we the first ones to come with how we come with our business strategies, like from promoting it from rapper standpoints. Cause my my King Lee actually, and he's an actual king for real. That's why I call him King Lee, not just call him no regular dude King. You know what I'm saying? He's a king of Korea, the Imperial family. But <clears throat> King Lee actually supports hip-hop community. He know how powerful the hip-hop world is. Most billionaires like him, most people, they, they don't even care about the hip-hop community, the black people. The, he'd be like, nah, Jay. Like, for Christmas, he was like, man, here's 40K. You gotta go give it out. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta go give away money. Jay, hold on. No. No, maybe he like, I'm gonna tell you how far-fetched he is, but he sold right in the rim, King Lee. He like, hey man, we need to get a, a a food truck out there. We need to get a snow cone machine. Uh, how about you think they got a cotton candy machine? You feel I was like, this him. All this for my black community. So for a man like that to believe in my community like this and want to help my community, it felt made me feel selfish. Like, bro, we got all this and we don't actually make changes. So it's a whole different J Money now. I don't, you know what I'm saying? It's like through. The trials of what I went through from Mr. Futuristic, from getting shot, from first name, last name, from being that dude that went from every label. You know Incognito. I went from Def Jam to Universal Want to Meet Me. Uh, everybody in the world. Due to what 1079 did for me. Stu, that dude right there played a powerful. You know how Stu is, his spirit. And it's like, I'm like, you know what? I'm finna turn Stu up. Now I got the situation. Now I got the billions behind me. I'm finna turn my man up. You know, because we can do right now whatever I want. But guess what? I'm being patient, letting God lead me, and letting the people around me instruct me. You know what I'm saying? You got to be instructable to be successful. Most people don't understand that. I didn't ever understand that. I thought the world and all these labels want to meet me because of me. No, bro, they want their entity. They didn't want me as a person. So if I can say anything what Mr. Futuristic did, bro, that was the birth of, like... Everything else that I'm doing, Shells.com. What Shells is, a, I don't know if y'all heard on the Beehive, but Shells turns this right here, yo, this TV, into a computer. Like, actual computer. We doing business like Walmart. It's like, damn, Jay Money on the phone with conversation with Walmart. Like, I mean, <laughs> like, it's like Bloomingburg and shit like that. We having these type of, and I'm like, whoa. And guess what? My King Lee trusts me so much due to the fact, because guess what? Mr. Futuristic. Trap of the year. King Lee was a, a actual fan of that shit. King Lee actually listened to it. No words from that. No the tone, no the bounce from that. You feel that? But who would have known? A Korean out here. Whole King. In the hip hop community court, and it now would save J Money 10 years later. So, how does it feel to know that you put passion and talent into a mixtape and it made it to the other side of the world? Man, it make me feel like if anything in life, if you put your mind to it and you put effort and grind to it, you can do it. And like I told you, let's go back. This is the most competitive 
sport. This is a sport too. In the game. And if you could do that here, man, that shit is a walk in the park, man. You feel what I'm saying? Because who all don't? Now, exactly, who don't have a friend? If anybody in this room say they ain't got a friend, family member that's trying to rap, I walk out of here and never come back. Everybody. Him, him, you, we, we all got it. Her, even her. She got a cousin, little cousin, a homeboy, a nigga that trying to holler at her, used to holler at her, somebody that rap or want to rap or sing or do beats or, uh, because all that's music related. All that's still competition. Even what y'all do, this a shit. I see radio and go, come and go. Look at the pro down directors. These motherfuckers come and go. I seen Steve Hedgewood, uh, Hurricane Dave, the other dude, Greg. Well, I don't seen a lot of them. And it's like, every, this is a competitive field. So for me just to be mentioned and be right here 10 years later, that's tell them, like, everybody everywhere I go, they be like, Jay Money, you a legend. You a great. But you want me to tell you what that shit sound like to me? Because my money and my status weren't adding up at the time. I'm like, damn, these folk been bamboozled. They think I'm going to go fuck. That's just how bad the devil will beat my spirit up. Instead of picking up, like, damn. If they believe that about me, why I can't believe it about me? And I got up. And I ain't gonna lie, it was like the devil tried to throw relationship issues. Somebody that was so loyal to you. But due to the fact that it's time for the devil to try to distract you any kind of way he can, he will get inside that person and they will instantly change to a whole nother person that you like. Do I know you? What's, hold on, hold on. You the one that first met and I didn't want to not be around you? Everybody go through that. I'm been through. That ain't nothing but the devil trying to throw it out. Then, if and if God ain't there in that relationship, it's gonna crumble. You know what I'm saying? And people they take God so lightly, bro. People think it's just like a cliche, nigga. What a camera? At? This one, nigga, 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 nigga. God is real. I'm telling you. Oh. <laughs> I got the scar to prove it. My whole body is all over me. I got scars everywhere. Tubes, what tubes been in me because I couldn't breathe. Fourth, my lungs collapsed. Head right here going through a windshield in the back too. Shot, all that. Hard head, boom. They said, what your mama say? Hard head make a soft behind. And the way my behind soft is because I'm, I'm, I'm always on point. I'm watching my surroundings. Girl, like, you so paranoid. Nah, babe, I'm on point. You slow. <laughs> like, I'm trying to avoid When you catch that shit You don't want to catch it no more Ever again You don't want to feel that shit no more So What was it like The first time you were out In your city And you heard a car pass by Somebody playing Your music Now I call everybody I call my engineer first Hey boy they playing that motherfucker Boy you hit Boy look I try Hey listen to it Cause that was the confirmation of It's market approved like, when we in this, we don't know how people going to take it. Even these big art, they can say whatever they want. They can like it all they want. But we don't know until we get that first Instagram comment. We don't know until we get that first retweet. And it's like, hard. Fire emoji. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't know. So it's like, and that's why I don't understand how people get the big head, get bigger than their fans. Because we got a lot of that going on. And, and and that's when they kind of like, you see them kind of crumble. But when you the kind of like Drake, but this man, that man don't even wear it, wear jury. This man can walk around like Mr. T. He don't even barely wear jury. This man might wear some Reeboks because he got a deal with these folks. <laughs> like, you feel me? So it's like, he walking through crowds of people and he got way more money than a lot of these niggas. But Drake, just a, man, Drake probably really ain't even got to have security because I don't think nobody will harm him. I think he can just come to Atlanta and walk around and everybody, hey, Drake. Cause he, Drake feels like the person, we know him. That's the dude next door. That's how Jay Money want to be, too. And that's how I am, kind of. People tell you, like, man, Jay Money everywhere, bro. Like, look at me. Don't, look out that door. I don't see no gang of niggas in the hallway waiting with Jay Money. I pulled up by myself. Stu, I'm like, Stu, where you at? I beat him here. Because I like to be on point all the time. He'll tell you, never slip. But, my bad. It's the feeling of, like, I can't even say it, bro. It's just a feeling, bro. It's just like, you know how you used to be on Christmas when you were, like, 10? 
the night before where you couldn't go to sleep, and then that morning, you be like, yeah, it's like that feeling, like that morning, not the anticipation. Because the anticipation is the wondering. That's the night before crib, before you drop it. Then when you drop it and you like, man, I dropped the song called Hold Up. You know what it did for Atlanta. If anybody in Atlanta, hold up. Hold up, hold up. Bro, swear to God, that song in one week had like 300K on YouTube. No push. Like now it's like a million something. No budget, no push, no nothing. Just YouTube. And guess what? It got other people on it. But it's just because it was on my YouTube and we kind of like had a difference with the people that was on my song, it only say J Money, hold up. They only say the people featuring on them. The young boot, he on there. <laughs> like, swear to God. Like, I'm putting all, fuck it. Y'all, I ain't putting nobody name. But that song took off within like a week. I was riding around. Nigga, I was at a Kroger. I'm coming out of Kroger. Some girls rolled past seeing me. They playing it, right? They didn't just actually play it. You know how they was doing that. They stopped, got out their car, running around the car. Hold up, hold up. Running up on me. I'm like, Oh my God, this it, this it. I'm telling you, it was it. Guess what? Not even three weeks later. I, yeah, with Khalifa, and I got shot six times, so I couldn't put my face on the record. So it was actually good enough. He intercepted it, and I didn't have a chance to defend the ball because I was in the hospital. I couldn't walk for nine months. You know, but. That was another thing. Watch me whip. Watch me nay nay. Oh, this is why I'm in the hospital getting ran off with. If you look on YouTube, you'll see it. Whip, whip. Now watch me, watch me. Me and young boot. I'm in the kitchen whipping with that arm and hat. Now watch me whip. I had to watch it. But it didn't, I liked it. It was like, it was flattering. Okay, y'all on me. Don't worry about it. I'm coming in time, y'all can't. Like this shit now? Boy. I got Uzi Vert, I got T.I., 50 Cent, Lil Wayne, Trouble, uh, who else just did Boosie, nigga, over with. You gonna think I'm dropping a Gangsta Grill or some shit. Like, it's gonna feel like a DJ drama. Like, straight up, I'm telling you, it's like the best music I could ever, and it was God, because I let God lead me and guide this music. Bye, bye, bye. Shout out to Mix It Up ATL, Remy Martin, bye, 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 shells.com, gotta put my shit in there. Hey, shout out to King Lee. God bless y'all world. God first. You'll never be last. Bye-bye.